everyone, it's Mostly Casual Commander. I'm BK, and today's game has Busterkins playing Lord Xander the Collector. He wants to take advantage of those ETB, attack, and death triggers on Lord Xander. Chris is playing Belladros Witherbloom, trying to take advantage of all of those creature tokens he'll make with an aristocrat's plan. I'm playing Layla Artful Provocateur, attempting to fly over my opponent's defenses and smash into him with a bunch of fairies. Kyle is playing Lathril, Blade of the Elves, hoping to have as many elves as possible on the battlefield, smashing his opponents, or draining them out as a plan B. So, Busterkin's weighted dice won the die roll, because he just can't not win. He plays a swamp and passes to Chris, who also plays a swamp. Over to me, I drop a drowned catacomb, tapped, and pass to Kyle. Undergrowth Stadium hits his battlefield, and then he casts Wirewood Symbiote, which incidentally is not an elf, but it can return elves to his hand. On to Busterkin's turn two, he plays another swamp, then he casts Felwar Stone. He could add any color mana that his opponents can control. Good job, bud. Forest hits Chris's battlefield, and then he says go. Back over to me. I play Seat of the Synod. Synod? Synod? I don't know. Then I cast Arcane Signet, and with that, I pass the turn over to Kyle. He'll draw, and he'll play Overgrown Tomb, taking two points of life to have it enter the battlefield untapped. Then he casts Nature's Lore, so he'll go search his library for a forest card and put it directly into play. In this case, it's a proper forest. Then he casts Llanowar Elves with said forest. He passes back over to Busterkins, and on to turn three, he plays Lightning Greaves, which can equip for zero, giving haste and shroud to a thing, which is great. Chris drops a forest. Then he casts Leyline Prowler. This thing's got Death Touch, Lifelink, and it's a mana dork that could dork out some mana. Back over to my turn, I play Hall of Heliod's Generosity, an insurance plan against future destruction of my enchantments. I cast my commander, Alela Artful Provocateur, hoping to make some fairy tokens, and pass a turn to Kyle, who plays Boseju, who endures. Then he casts Finale of Devastation, where X equals 3, ensuring that he's advancing his board state on each one of his turns. He gets Marwyn, the Nurturer, out onto the battlefield, aiming at increasing his mana production. And with that, he'll move to combat with Wirewood Symbiote, attacking Busterkins for one. And onto turn four, Busterkins unfortunately misses a land drop, so he tries to make the best of a bad situation by casting Phyrexian Metamorph, copying Leyline Prowler. He equips his Lightning Greaves to it and passes the turn. Chris plays Temple of Milady. <laughs> Everybody calls it that. He keeps the thing on top, and then he casts Druidic Satchel, which will also allow him to look at the top part of his library, and then stuff happens. He moves to combat, and he hits me for two, and then he gains two with his life-linking mana dork. Onto my turn, I play Prairie Stream as my land for turn, which enters the battlefield tapped and feels bad. Then I cast Foundry Inspector, triggering a Layla, getting me a blue fairy, not a black fairy, but a blue one. Then I cast Talisman of Dominance, which triggers a Layla again, so I get another blue fairy. It's definitely a blue fairy. I go to combat at Chris, dropping him back to 40, and I go back up to 40 myself. Over to Kyle's turn, he plays Realm Walker, which is definitely an elf, which will trigger Marwyn getting a plus one plus one counter on Marwyn. He can start peeking the scene on top of his library as well. He casts Timberwatch Elf, again triggering Marwyn and enabling him to pump up one of his elves on combat. He floats a green mana with his Llanowar Elves, activates Wirewood Symbiote, bouncing it back to his hand, untapping Marwyn, then recasting Llanowar with the very same mana it produced, triggering Marwyn again. Busterkins plays an island. As his land for turn, I find my blue fairy tokens. Then Busterkins plays Conjurer's Closet with the intent of flickering some of his things that have ETB effects on his end step. Over to Chris, he drops a swamp as his land for turn, then he casts Blood Artist, an important creature in his deck's game plan trying to drain out his opponents by killing his own stuff. He activates his Druidic Satchel, looks at the top card, which is a Sangromancer, and because he revealed a creature this way, Druidic Satchel's like, yo, here's this plant thing. Then Chris dorks out some mana and casts Feed the Swarm, targeting Marwyn, but Kyle says, in response, I'm going to activate my Wirewood Symbiote, bouncing Marwyn back to my hand. On my turn, I play Cathar's Crusade. This will trigger a Layla, making a blue fairy creature token. So that'll enter the battlefield, but won't see Cathar's Crusade. I do cast Lightning Greaves as a follow-up, triggering a Layla again. This will make a fairy token that sees Cathar's Crusade. I clean up my board a little bit, I give plus one plus one counters to all my stuff, I equip Lightning Greaves to Alayla, then I move to combat at Chris. So with all that, I'll smack him down to 31, and I'll go up a little bit because of Alayla's lifelink. 
Onto Kyle's turn, he draws Peaks, the top of his library. Then he recasts Marwyn, the Nurturer. And after that, he will cast Fintorn Elves off the top of his library. This will trigger Marwyn, getting a plus one, plus one counter on her. He peeks the top of his library again, because he has the right to do that. Then onto combat, he swings Realmwalker at me. Oh, uh, that was a tank. Sure, so before damage, I will tap Timberwatch Elf to pump Realmwalker. One, two, three, four, five. Trigger Wirewood Symbiote, bounce Fintorn Elves back to my hand, untap Timberwatch Elf, and then add another one, two, three, four. So pumping him nine, nine. So he becomes a 11, 12. So <clears throat> on second thought. <laughs> <laughs> I completely forgot that Timberwatch Elf was a thing. He casts Fintorn Elves again, triggering Marwyn, and passing the turn to Busterkins. He draws and plays Sulphur Falls as his land for turn. Then he casts Fraying Sanity on Chris, effectively milling him for every card put into his graveyard each turn. Chris plays a forest as his land, and then he casts his commander, Veladros Witherbloom. So he will start making 1-1 one, one black green pest creatures on each upkeep, and he could pay 10 life to untap all of his lands. Onto my turn, Chris makes a pest, which I think he got that token off of Etsy or something. I draw for turn, I clean up my board, I cast Ghostly Prison, making it harder for my opponents to attack me. This generates a fairy, which triggers Cathar's Crusade, pumping up my team by giving out plus one plus one counters onto each one of my creatures. I cast Hannah, Ship's Navigator, again triggering Cathar's Crusade, and distributing a plus one plus one counter on all my stuff. I forgot to put one on Hannah, but I'll fix that in a little bit. I move my boots and attack Kyle. Why? Because of the following reasons. Number one, you're a magic player named Kyle. That's it. I'm kidding, buddy. Objectively, you're the player in the best position, possibly aside from me. He uses Timberwatch Elf to pump up Marwyn, and then taps Marwyn for a whole bunch of mana. Using some of that mana, he casts Guardian Project, and then off the top of his library, he casts Azuri, Renegade Leader. And remember, he could cast Elves off the top of his library thanks to Realmwalker. Kyle plays a Forest as his land for turn, and then he casts Okame Adversary. And this was a little cheaper to cast because Chris has a green permanent out. Good job, Chris. So anyway, it triggered Marwyn again. Then Kyle decides to float a mana with his Llanowar Elves. He'll activate Wirewood Symbiote, bouncing Llanowar Elves back to his hand, and untapping Marwyn, which remember is still pumped plus five, plus five. When he casts his Llanowar Elves using that mana, he pumps Marwyn again. He draws a card, casts Llanowar Visionary, again triggering Marwyn and drawing a card from both Guardian Project as well as its ETB trigger. Copper Horden Scout hits his battlefield, again drawing a card from Guardian Project, triggering Marwyn to a very, very large sum. So he can tap Marwyn and gains 13 floating green mana, taps Findhorn Elf to add to that, casts Kenrith's Transformation on my Foundry Inspector, turning it into a 3-3 elk, but good news, it has three plus one plus one counters on it. Jagged Scar Archers hits his battlefield, yet again triggering Guardian Project and Marwyn, and then he casts Wolverine Riders, again drawing a card, triggering Marwyn, and starting to produce him some elf creature tokens on upkeep, plus he gains some life from them as well. He casts Boreal Druid, triggering Marwyn, getting a card draw, and he'll gain some life equal to its toughness thanks to his Wolverine Riders. And after all said and done, Kyle will have to pass the turn with a very impressive board state. I'm sure Kyle was digging for a Crater Hoof Behemoth, but unfortunately did not find it. Over to Busterkin's turn, his first card drawn is a Temporal Mastery, so he'll get to miracle that out at a reduced cost. So that was it for Busterkin's first turn, but on his second turn, Kyle and Chris will both get a token, and Kyle will gain some life. Busterkin's plays a Swamp as his land, so having that extra turn and card draw was exactly what Busterkin's needed in order to find that Swamp so he could cast his commander. Zandy. Ah yes, Zandy. Good old Zandy. When he ETBs, he targets Kyle and makes Kyle discard three cards. Then he equips his boots and moves right into combat at Chris. Then an attack trigger happens, milling Chris half his library. 86. What's half of 86? I don't know, math 43? Oh, you're done. <laughs> In oh. response, I'm going to pay 10 life. So Chris pays in order to untap all of his lands, and then he activates his Druidic Satchel. Now, if it's a land, he'll get to put it onto the battlefield, therefore making his library an odd number instead of even, and giving him one more turn in the game. But it was not a land. So Chris declares blocks with a pest against Xander, and when it dies, this will trigger Blood Artist, so he drains Busterkin's one. On his end step, Frank Sanity will trigger, and Chris has no more library. And over to Chris's turn, he untaps. Upkeep triggers happen for him and Kyle. He goes to draw and is knocked out of the game. And with Chris out, it's now my turn. I have, I have an additional... Chris's turn was so fast that I forgot he did have an <laughs> 
So Kyle makes his 1-1, gains some life, and I cast Baleful Strix. This will trigger Alayla, because it's an artifact. I'll make a fairy with that on the stack, getting plus one plus one counters on all my stuff, and then Baleful Strix will resolve and enter the battlefield, triggering Cathar's Crusade, as well as giving me a card draw. So I'll put counters on all of my stuff yet again. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, wow, BK has quite an impressive board state, what with all the flying fairy things and all the plus one plus one counters on all of his stuff. And you know something? You'd be right. Quite frankly, I just think I got lucky that none of my opponents had a board wipe at a key moment in the game. I moved to combat with enough airborne damage to knock both of my opponents out of the game. Oh, yeah. What's that showcase this one? We did it. It's <laughs> not showcase it. All right, Chris, do a countdown. Three, two. Oh, wait, are we going on go or are we going on one? <laughs> Pretty sure we start with one, two. Yeah, three. we start one, two, three. Uh, three two, are, we going, are, we going are, we, are we going at three or are we going at go? Uh, one, like, it, we go at like one, two, three. So we go at three. Yeah. Okay. So it's, go? it's three go. No, I'm not right? saying. I'm not. Are you saying going one go. two three go or do we one two three go? <laughs> or is one, it one two, two three, three go to handshake? Is there a pause so we, after the three? Do we yes, go on? There's a pause. Do we go on three or do we go after three? Or do you say we go, go after three? Do we go on go. Three. There's a pause. One two three. We go three. on pause. And whose hand am I shaking? Brandon's. Oh, mine. Obviously. Okay. How long is the pause? And how long do we shake hands for? We Where do are you starting the pause? countdown? From like. You're going from 100 <laughs> to 3, and then we go after 3. Yes. I, ag I agree. <laughs> Alright, let's begin. A 3. 100. 100. <laughs> Come on! It's not. 99. Aren't you an engineer? A 1, 2, 3. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's the game, everybody. Please let us know what you thought about the game in the comments. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the content you've been enjoying, and as always, thank you for watching.